South Africa seizes Niger bound ship loaded with arms. Pensioners cry for help over alleged scam by pension administrators. In international news, Australia Parliament sacks Tumbel appoints new Prime Minister. And in sport, Victor Moses under pressure to come out of retirement. This is ANN News. I am Olajumoke Olatunji. The National Joint Committee on Independent National Electoral Commission will resume deliberations on Monday. Members of the committee are expected to take a decision on whether to approve 143 billion naira of President Buhari's request of 189 billion naira to fund INEX budget for next year's election. INEX says the president's requested amount is the total requirement for the 2019 general elections. We're still in the National Assembly and this time the PDP caucus of the House of Representatives has blamed President Buhari for his delay in signing the 2018 electoral bill. The caucus said the bill had innovations to promote the conduct of free and fair polls next year. The chairman, House Committee on Justice, says one of the key features of the bill was the electronic transmission of results from polling units. He says that will lead to a faster declaration of results and will make it more difficult to tamper with results. But the APC caucus says there has been conflicting National Assembly positions on the bill. The caucus said the president will get back to the National Assembly when he returns from recess. Away from the National Assembly, seven years after Governor Rocha Sokorocha sacked 27 local council chairmen and 645 councillors in Imo State, the electorate will head to the polls on Saturday to elect new representatives. Okorocha sacked them after defeating former Governor Ikedio Hakim. He accused the administration of breaching the court ruling that restrained the government from conducting the council elections. Okorocha said the sack was based on the strange of irregularities, unconstitutional breaches and other issues. While APC had announced his readiness for the polls, PDP says it would boycott the exercise, citing fears that the poll would not be credible. Now, this next story is really bad PR for Nigeria. A Nigeria-bound Russian ship has been detained in South Africa for carrying illegal arms. The cargo ship was arrested near Port Elizabeth. Security checks on the vessel reviewed 20 containers of arms and explosives believed to be legal was heading for Nigeria's commercial city of Lagos and the United States. The prevalence of small arms is believed to be the cause of the violent crimes being perpetrated across the country. Investigations are ongoing. The Republic of Benin and Niger have paid $10 million to offset their electricity bills to Nigeria to avert being disconnected. The federal government has threatened to disconnect countries that owe Nigeria for the electricity supply. Niger sells power to the Republic of Togo, Benin and Niger. The West African countries are classified as internal customers. The Ministry of Power says the debt has increased the financial obligations to Nigeria's power generation companies. Individuals and groups from the Southeast Geopolitical Zone are angry over the proposed relaunch of the third round of Operation Python Dance. Reports say the first and second round of the military operation, named Operation Egweke in Igbo language, left enormous casualties and victims are yet to recover from them. Former chairman of the Nigerian Bar Association, Idemili Branch, Ben Okoko, says the exercise is a huge waste of public funds. Now to a really sad story of deadly internal squabbles. Another Nigerian man has been killed in South Africa and this time again by a fellow Nigerian. The Nigerian community in South Africa has condemned the reported killing of Okoli Paul from Enugu State by another Nigerian, Donald Modi. The disease was stabbed during an argument that resulted in a physical combat in West Rand. Modi has been on the run since the gruesome murder and the police has declared him wanted. Last month, a Nigerian, Chibuzo Nwanko, was shot dead by another Nigerian, Lawrence Nwari, in a bar in South Africa. 
Pensioners are crying out for help over alleged scam by PENCOM and some pension administrators. They're asking the federal government to save their lives by ending shorted payments by some pension officers. One of the pensioners said despite the National Assembly Act of 2014 stipulating a payment withdrawal program of 25% minimum, some retirees were paid only 20% of their entitlements in July. The pension administrators said the retirees were paid according to instructions from PENCOM. The Association of Burial the Chan of Nigeria has kicked against the ongoing suspension of BDC accounts by banks and demand for tax remittances on turnover volumes. Hapcon President Aminu Gwadabe says banks are acting on the directive of Federal Inland Revenue Services to demand that BDCs pay taxes on funds used to bid for their dollar allocation sent to the Central Bank of Nigeria through commercial banks on a weekly basis. He said many of the affected agencies are already facing major challenges that need to be addressed immediately. Guadabe also said APCON will continue to implement zero tolerance for non-compliance with regulatory requirements among its members. There are indications that the rift between Oyo State Government and the owner of Fresh FM Ibadongi in Kayefele will soon be over. Ayefele and the Alafio of Oyo, or Balamidi Adeyemi, were at the governor's office accompanied by other monarchs to meet with the governor. The 31st class traditional rulers were led by the Alafi. The meeting addressed the issues generated by the partial demolition of the radio station structure. Ayefele was reported to have apologized to the governor and expressed readiness and amicable resolution to the matter in the interest of peace. Up next, African stories and later, Australia gets a new prime minister in brutal party coup. You are watching ANN. gives 2,000% bonus for reactivating your MTN sale. That's right. If you haven't used your MTN SIM for 45 days or more, recharge now and get 2,000% bonus. That's right. 2,000% bonus for your first recharge of every month. Welcome back. This is in news happening around Africa. A doctor in Eastern Democratic Republic of the Congo has been hospitalized with Ebola. Earlier today, we reported the death toll had hit 61. World Health Organization, WHO, said on Friday, 97 of the doctor's contacts have been identified in an area almost entirely surrounded by armed militia. WHO says it is the first time it has a confirmed case and contact in an area of high insecurity. The outbreak began earlier this month in Manjina, North Kivu province, and has now spread into neighboring Ituru. Aid agencies have raised concerns over a looming humanitarian crisis in southern Ethiopia. Following recent clashes, they have displaced tens of thousands of people after a wave of intercommunal clashes along the border areas. 
It has been reported that people are living in really dire conditions with schools and colleges being converted into temporary homes for the thousands of displaced persons. Malnourished children, pregnant women and the aged share very small spaces which are exposed to the rains. Rainy season have made some roads impossible, further complicating the delivery of much-needed aid to more than one million people. Dozens are believed to have died in a further wave of violence which erupted in March. Prime Minister Abi Ahmed has condemned the clashes witnessed in various parts of the country and promised to crack down on the perpetrators. More than 2 million people have been forced to flee their homes in Ethiopia because of ethnic conflict and droughts. Zimbabwe's constitutional court is ruling on Friday on the May's opposition challenge to the result of last month's historic presidential election. Security is tight in the capital Harare as the court determines whether President Emerson Ngagwa's narrow victory is valid. The opposition claims votes rigging and seeks either a fresh election or a declaration that its candidate Nelson Chamisa won. If the court opposes Nangagwa's win, the inauguration would take place within 48 hours. The ruling cannot be appealed. A credible vote is key to lifting international sanctions on Zimbabwe as a Southern African nation tries to move away from the long shadow of Robert Mugabe's 37-year rule. The July 30 vote was peaceful, but scenes of the military sweeping into the capital two days ago to disperse opposition protesters led to fears that the government of Nangagwa, a former Mugabe enforcer, was stuck in the past despite declarations of reforms. The UN Security Council says a political settlement in Burundi is crucial ahead of elections in 2020 and is urging all parties, especially the government, to participate actively and unconditionally in an inter-Burundi dialogue. The council reiterated its concern at the slow pace of talks and stressed that dialogue is the only viable process for a sustainable political settlement there. Council members urge all relevant parties, including national, regional and international actors, to ensure a peaceful new round of negotiations. The Security Council said it expects the 2020 elections to be free, fair, transparent, peaceful and fully inclusive. It added that considerable improvements to the political and human rights situation are necessary to enable credible elections. The Sahel state of Niger said on Thursday it has sent security reinforcements to parts of its borders struggling with an influx of displaced people and criminals from neighboring Nigeria. The measures have been taken in the Maradi area on the southern central part of the border, near the northwestern Zanfara state. Maradi Governor Zakari Umaru said they are currently registering many refugees, whole families who are coming over. He said the refugees were mainly coming from Zanfara, but did not give numbers or say why they are fleeing to Niger. He added that plenty units have been deployed on the border. A Maradi president said regions all along the border with Nigeria were now prone to cross-frontier crime, particularly car to theft by armed Nigerian gangs. Libya has refused to take in a group of 177 migrants stranded on an Italian coast guard boat of a Sicilian port after Rome insisted they would not be allowed to disembark. Italy's interior minister Matteo Salvini threatened earlier this week to return the migrants to North Africa unless other European governments offered to take in some of them. Foreign Minister of the UN-backed Libyan Unity Government, Mohamed Siala, said Libya does not accept this unjust and illegal measure because it already has more than 700,000 migrants on its territory. In a statement, he called on the international community to pressure the countries of departure to repatriate their nationals, adding that Libya had only served as a transit point. The Italian boat Disiotti arrived on Monday night off the Sicilian port of Catania. Parliamentarians in Equatorial Guinea have been banned from traveling outside the country unless authorized by Vice President Theodore Nguyen Obiang, some of the presidents. A letter sent to lawmakers last month says the measure has been put in place on grounds of national interest. Lawmakers must now submit a request to travel abroad to the head of the National Assembly or the Senate with the agreement of the Vice President. A similar ban was imposed on all civil servants two months ago. The restriction is suspected to be prompted by a coup attempt last year on President Teodoro Obiang Nguema, Africa's longest serving leader. 
Ghana's former president John Mahama announced on Thursday he will seek nomination of the main opposition party and contest the 2020 election. Mahama became president in 2012 but lost his re-election bid to President Nana Akufo Addo in 2016 over a faltering economy and corruption allegations. He said he's decided to give the country's top job another shot. 59-year-old Mahama said his decision was because of a groundswell of support from Ghanaians to right the wrongs of the past and put an end to the cries of the people under the current dispensation. He said his aim was to position Ghana as a true middle-income country by modernizing dilapidated social and economic infrastructure. He is expected to vie for the National Democratic Congress ticket with at least four contenders at the party primaries slated for later this year. Still ahead, international news, tumble tumbled out of office. And later, sports. You are watching ANN. Are you sure you want to do this? Adam, go and bring us your husband. Okay. Hello, baby. We're in this together, okay? Can you hear me? Keep coming forward. Wait, wait, wait. Stop, stop. <laughs> you okay, Lindsay? You alright? <laughs> Keep walking down. Keep walking to the left. Yes. You're almost here. Keep going. You are here. <laughs> wow, you did it. I'm just so glad I didn't have to use my cane to do this. And I am so glad no other man got you before me. Let me be your eyes. We will never stop working to give you a network you can rely on so you can enjoy life's special moments. MTN, everywhere you go. I am Lucy Adeyemi. I am Roti Akitunde. I am on Lajmo, your Latin G. We bring you the news on ANN News Business. Politics. Global News. Watch ANN News in a truly African spirit. Welcome back. This is NN News, now Global News. Australia has a new Prime Minister. Scott Morrison took over after Malcolm Tumble was ousted by party rivals in a leadership contest. Tumble had been under pressure from poor polling and what he described as an insurgency by conservative MPs. Morrison defeated Julie Bishop in a three-way leadership contest and won an internal ballot for the 540 over former Home Affairs Minister Peter Dutton, who had been Tumble's most vocal threat. Tumble is the fourth Australian Prime Minister to be forced out by colleagues, as Scott Morrison is sworn in. Tumble was ousted without completing his three years in power, and Morrison has become Australia's 30th Prime Minister and the seventh in a decade. U.S. President Donald Trump has responded to speculations that he might be impeached, warning that the move would damage the economy. Trump said everybody will go poor and the markets would crash if they were impeached. He spoke in a television interview after his former lawyer, Michael Cohen, pleaded guilty to violating election laws. Cohen says he handed harsh money payments to two women at Trump's direction during the presidential campaign two years ago. But Trump insists the two payments had not broken election campaigns. He said the payments had come from him personally and, would, and not from the campaign, a point that reportedly contradicts evidence gathered from Cohen's office. Analysts say it is unlikely the Republican House majority will try to impeach him before midterm elections in November. Hurricane Lane is moving heavily toward the U.S. state of Hawaii, bringing it with it strong winds and torrential rains and causing flooding and landslides. This has led to the closure of schools and offices as residents took cover from the storm. President Donald Trump earlier declared a state of emergency, saying federal authorities were in standby to provide support and supplies to local and state emergency response efforts. 
National Weather Service says while the storm had been downgraded, the situation remains dangerous and severe flooding is a major concern. The European Union has agreed on 18 million euros in aid for Iran to help its private sector. It is also intended to help offset the impact of U.S. sanctions and salvage a 2015 deal that saw the country limit its nuclear ambitions. The announcement is part of the bloc's efforts to support the nuclear accord the President Donald Trump abandoned three months ago. EU's foreign policy chief Federica Mogherino says the bloc was committed to cooperation with Iran. Mogherini said the aid will widen economic and sectoral relations in areas of direct benefit to EU citizens. Police in Argentina have started searching properties belonging to a former president of the country, Cristina Fernandez de Kirchner, as part of a major corruption investigation. Her houses in Patagonia and Buenos Aires were raided after Judge Claudia Bonadio asked to partially lift Fernandez's immunity as he investigates bribery allegations during her presidency. Fernandez has denied any wrongdoing. She described the investigation as shameless, complaining she was the first elected senator to be searched. Fernandez still voted on Wednesday for her immunity to be lifted to allow the search of her three properties to continue. She also instructed her colleagues to do the same. Coming up, sports. Coaches pressure Victor Moses to come out of retirement. You are watching ANN. If you know fit, go internet. Or follow for Twitter. You know fit, snap photo send. Or get it photo send. Now because you they use super lasa. Your phone no they answer. See me see Wahala. My brother, go get smart for the air. to a smartphone today and get double data for six months on any MTN data bundle you buy. Simply purchase a smartphone from any store anywhere in Nigeria or bring your current smartphone from any network. Insert your MTN SIM card to start enjoying your double data bonus. Offer is open to all new and existing MTN subscribers. Join the largest smartphone movement today. Make it up for your hand. While the world sleeps, in a new stays awake. News takes no time off. We are awake so you can sleep. We report the stories that keep you up to date. Events that affect your day, your week, month and experiences. We scour the world. Bringing you to your living room. Watch in news in a truly African spirit. Welcome back. This is Anna News in Sport. Victor Moses is under pressure from Nigerian coach Gennaro Ra and the Nigerian Football Federation to reverse his international retirement. Moses' announcement of his retirement last week caught by surprise many of his teammates, fans and Gennaro Ra. Moses said he had to take the decision to focus on his club career and his family, saying he had informed Ra of his decision by telephone. Meanwhile, NFF General Secretary Sanusi Muhammad was quoted as saying the football house is talking with him to convince him to rescind his decision for the sake of the country. As part of efforts to improve the nation's Olympic performance, the Nigerian Sports Development Fund will inaugurate a 90-day campaign at the end of next month to raise 900 million naira for 90 athletes preparing for Tokyo 2022. Director General of NSDFI, Olaji Fair Fashikun, says Nigeria's Olympic outings in recent times have not been encouraging, saying it must change with the support of Nigerians. The DG said they intend to give each of the 90 athletes five sports 10 million naira elite athletes development grant. Fashikun said a seven-man committee will manage funds that will be raised. That is the end of news this evening. Thank you for joining us. For details on this and other stories, visit our website, tnnafrica.net. Conversation continues on our social media platforms, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at TNN Africa TV. 
I am Olajimo Kiyo Latsinji. Have a great weekend.